all the code we've been looking at so far has just been this one giant script M file. Sometimes it makes sense to kind of break your code up into little functions where each function has a very specific thing that it does. So let's go ahead and talk about functions and how you write the uh, function in MATLAB and define the input and output interfaces. The example we're going to look at right here is very simple. I've made a function called compute area. So you can here see a function call. If I uh, right click, I can open up this other M file. That's exactly what it is. It's just another M file. So I've opened up this file called compute area.m. And this is a function. It's a very simple function. It's a function that takes just one input argument, r, the radius of the circle, and then it returns the area of the circle. So the actual math inside here is quite simple. It's just pi r squared to compute the area. But this tells us what, how to write a function. You always start off with a function, and then you have a list of the output variables. If there is more than one output, we would put them in brackets like this. Maybe there are multiple outputs that you need. You would do something like that, but this function only has one output. If there were multiple inputs, you could do things like this, just separate them with commas. So if you needed to write a function that had more inputs than just this one, you could do something like that. But again, this function just has one input. And then you have a whole bunch of stuff, and then usually you put a return at the end just to indicate the end of the function. And this is kind of how you do functions in MATLAB. And the reason you like to do functions is if you're going to use a piece of code over and over again, instead of kind of copying and pasting that code over and over again, you run the risk of if there's an error, then you have to go change that code in lots of different places. If you write a function, and anytime you need to do that code, you just call the function, then if you ever discover an error in your underlying code, then there's only one spot you have to fix things. You can just come to this one function, change things to how you want it, and then any call of that function will now be correct. So functions are just good kind of programming practice for how you break things up. So let's actually go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and evaluate that and we'll let that run. It's going to run through the whole thing actually. Let me see, let me just copy this under the command line. We'll do it that way. So my area is equal to 28.27, which is indeed pi times 9, which is pi r squared. Another thing you want to do as you write your functions is you want to try to make them vectorized as, as, if possible. So if you'll notice in this function compute area, when I did the math, notice that I just didn't do pi times r squared, I did pi times r dot squared. Remember the dot is an element-wise operator. So in this instance, the way I've made this function, I could actually compute the area of a whole bunch of different circles with one call. Maybe I want to call and compute the area of a circle with radius 1, and the area of a circle with radius 1 and a quarter, 1 and a half, 1.75, all the way up through 5. Well, instead of doing a for loop and calling this function 17 different times, since I've been smart about how I wrote my function and I made a vectorized function, I can actually call my function with the vector r, and it will return a vector my area. So I can just compute all of these in one fell swoop, because when I wrote my function, I was careful to make the math vectorized. Normally in a function 2 up here, you would put comments and you would describe what the inputs are. r is radius radius of a circle, output, put, area, area of a circle of radius r, Man, I'm having trouble typing, radius r, and you can even put things, you know, input, r can be a 1 by n vector or a n by 1 vector or a scalar. So you usually put some things up here to tell a person who doesn't know how to call this function just a little bit about it so they know what's going on. So that's how you do functions in MATLAB. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Just a function name, a list of input arguments separated by commas. In this case, what we were looking at was simple enough to only need one input. A list of outputs separated by commas. In brackets, again, we only had one here. And then the function itself is just another M file. That's all this is. It's just another M file. So that's how you do basic functions in MATLAB.